This lesson is for day seven. We're going to be working with matrices today uh, without the use of a calculator. So we're just going to define what a matrix is. We're going to show you why it's important and why it's relevant. And then tomorrow in your next lesson, you're going to start using um, your calculator to compute a lot of stuff with your matrix with matrices. So first, just to define a matrix, all that a matrix does is organize data. So you heard me say the word matrices. That's the plural of matrix. Um, so if we were going to organize um, some information, normally we do this in class, but since I'm just doing a video with it, um, it's kind of hard to do. But what we what we start off, just to introduce this to students, we say, okay, let's count up the number of male students with black, brown, red, or blonde hair, and then we do the same thing for the girls. So a matrix is a shorthand way of, of basically organizing that information. So let's say that there were six guys with black hair. Well, that number would go here to represent that. If there were 10 boys with brown hair, you'd put a 10 here and so on. So um, I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Um, but basically, if I were to ask how many girls have brown hair, you would look in this slot here because that would be the you know brown and girl. Um, the dimensions of a matrix just mean the size of the matrix. The size of the matrix is given by telling the number of rows and the number of columns. A row is the boy or the girl. So these are rows. Rows go across. So rows go across and columns go up and down. Kind of like, you know, I guess the columns of a building go up and down. You can think of it that way. Um, but that's how I kind of remember it. So rows go across, columns go down. So this particular matrix, since there are two rows, would be a two by one, two, three, four column. So two by four. That would be how you would um, tell what that matrix is. Okay. Now let's just real quickly go through the, the dimensions of each of these matrices. So this has three rows. So this is a three by two because it has two columns. So we would say this is a three by two. And that's how you, you write out the dimensions. This particular matrix in number two is a two by three. And the last one is a three by one. It has three rows and only one column. Now, when you add or subtract matrices, the dimensions must be the exact same in order to be added. So for example, this is a three by two matrix. This is also a three by two matrix. Since they are the same dimension, we can add them. And just to add them, all you have to do is look in the first row, first column, it needs to be added to the digit in the first row, first column here. So 2 plus negative 1 is what I would put into the very first slot of my new matrix. So I would put the number 1 here. Then I would take 1 and negative 9 and add that together as well. So after adding those, this is what my resulting matrix is after I add those two. Now in the next part, um, number 2 here, this is a 1 by 3 and you're trying to add a 3 by 1 to a 1 by 3. So this cannot be added and you would just say can't be added. They are not the same dimension, so you can't add them. In problem three, I'll, I'm going to let you guys decide one if you can add these, and then I want you to check the key and make sure that you can do problem number three. Okay, now a, a number can always be multiplied by a matrix, and what you're going to see, this is called scalar multiplication. Scalar just means any number on the outside of your matrix. So what that does is it, it multiplies every single number within that matrix by this number here. So my new matrix, it doesn't change the dimension of it. It will just stay negative 6 and then positive 96. I'm sorry, 69. Negative 3 and then negative 15, negative 33, and positive 24 um, in that last row, last column. So you're just multiplying literally each single term here by that number on the outside. So that's what a scalar multiplication is. Okay, next up we have determinants and inverses. Now the determinant determines whether a matrix has a, a matrix has a multipli multiplicative inverse. Okay, we're not going to actually get into how to find an inverse. We just want to know whether or not a, a matrix has an inverse. So um, I know these aren't words that you're familiar with yet, but all that you need to do when you're finding a determinant is to look at only two by two matrices. So that's what we're going to focus on. Okay. So we don't need to do 3 by 3s or 4 by 4s or anything else um, because those are beyond this course. You might see that when you get to college. Um, but when you decide whether or not um, a matrix has an inverse, you need to test its determinant. 
Now the determinant of a matrix is found by taking whatever number is in the first row, first column, and multiplying that by, since we're only doing two by twos, the number across from that, this D. So we take A times D, and we subtract B times C. That gives us the determinant. Now if that equals zero, then the matrix has no multiplicative inverse. I can't say that word right, multiplicative. There we go, inverse, okay? So let's actually practice so that it kind of makes a little bit more sense, because I know I'm just talking a lot of words at you. Um, so let's see how that looks when we actually calculate it. So if I want to find the determinant of this matrix, this is what it's going to look like. The determinant of this matrix, and we're only going to do two by twos, is going to be found by multiplying this digit times this digit. So I get six times three, which is 18. And then I subtract this digit times this digit. It doesn't matter the order that you do it. You could do negative three times nine. But what you need to make sure is that you have the right sign. So this is a negative 27, but I'm supposed to subtract when I find the determinant, right? It's AD minus BC, where this is A, this is D, this is B, and this is C. So um, now that's going to turn into 18 plus 27. And this determinant of this matrix is 45. So the determinant of that particular matrix was 45. Now in problem number two, if I multiply to find the determinant of 4, 12, 2, 6, this matrix here, I get 4 times 6, so that's 24, minus 12 times 2, which is also 24. This determinant equals 0. So the determinant of that particular matrix is 0, which means that this has no inverse. This is an important concept that we will be assessing you on, and all you want to do to determine whether or not something has an inverse is to find its determinant, and if it equals zero, then it has no inverse. I'm going to let you guys try number three, and then check that with the key. Okay, the last portion of this lesson is probably the most difficult. Everything else is pretty straightforward as far as how to add or subtract matrices. Now, when you multiply two matrices, though, you have to figure out a certain different type of rule. First, you're going to determine whether your two matrices can be multiplied. So to do that, you're going to write down the dimensions of each matrix. So let's do that with our first example here. This matrix is two by three, okay? It has two rows and three columns. The next matrix here is a three by two. If your middle numbers are the same, okay? And middle numbers means this number and this number. These are in the middle. If I were to rewrite this here, these two numbers are in the middle. If these are the same, then these two matrices can be multiplied. So can these be multiplied? Yes. Okay, because these two numbers here are the exact same. Now, to find the dimensions of your product when you find, you know, or when you multiply these two matrices, the dimensions of the product should be these two outside numbers. So this will result in a two by two matrix after I multiply these, okay? And we're gonna do these without a calculator. Eventually we're gonna show you how to do these with a calculator, but we're gonna multiply these two matrices without a calculator at first. And to do that, um, it's kind of a complicated process if you don't visualize it easily, but you take your rows and you multiply it by um, the column entry. So let's actually go through and do a problem together. All right, so in this very first example here, we have a two by two multiplied by a two by two. So we look inside and we say, okay, these are the exact same. So yes, we can multiply them then our resulting matrix should also be a two by two. So that's what we should expect to get for our final answer here, a two by two matrix. So I'm gonna write that off to the side, and then we're gonna actually go ahead and do that. All right, when you multiply matrices, you are going to take the row, this first row, and multiply it by this first column here. So the column goes up and down like this, okay? So we multiply the digits five and negative seven, with negative 12 and 2. That's going to be the first number that goes in this 2 by 2 matrix that results. Okay, we know that that matrix is supposed to be 2 by 2. So let me show you what I mean by that. We're going to take 5 and multiply it by negative 12. We get negative 60. Then we take negative 7 and we multiply that by 2 to get negative 14. We add those two numbers together and that's what goes inside that first slot. So that first number here should be a negative 74. Now I take that same row for the second for the second slot here. I take that same row, that first row here, and I multiply it by this column now. 
Okay, so I'm done now with this column. So I'm going to multiply the 5 times 3 to get 15, this negative 7 times 0 to get 0. So I add those two together, and that digit, 15, that number, goes here in that second slot now. Okay. So after I do every single row by each column, then I switch to the next row. This next row here is 1, 4, and I'm going to do it and repeat the same process. So I multiply it by that first column here. So I take the digits here, and I multiply it by the numbers here. So I take 1 times negative 12, so the first digit in each one, 1 times negative 12, and then I add to that 4 times 2. So 4 times 2. So I have negative 12 plus 8, which gives me negative 4. And that's what I stick inside the, the last, or the, you know, row 2, column 1. Now the last num number that I'm going to multiply is now that next column here. Oops. That's not a highlighter. Right here. Okay. So I take the 1 and I multiply it by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. Then I take 4 and I multiply it by this 0, and that gives me a 0. I add those two together to get 3. So this is my resulting matrix. Let me write that in blue, just so it doesn't confuse you. But this is the resulting matrix that I get when I multiply those 2 by 2s together. So replay that if that didn't quite make sense, because we're going to continue throughout these next few problems. Um, and you need to have a, a basic understanding of that 2 by 2 in order to do um, different dimensions. Okay, now in this next problem, we first need to decide whether or not we can multiply these two matrices. This is a 3 by 2 multiplied by a 2 by 2. We look inside here, and since these are the same, they can be multiplied. And our resulting matrix should end up being a 3 by 2. Okay, so I'm going to draw out a 3 by 2 here. It has three rows, and it has two columns. So that's what this is going to look like. I'm going to have a digit in each spot here, okay, or not a digit, I, I keep saying the word digit and it shouldn't be digit, it's just a number, you're going to have an integer most likely because, well, you will have an integer since all these are integers to begin with, but um, that's what your resulting matrix should look like, okay, so let's begin, we're going to multiply this row by this column here, okay, that number is going to go in this first slot here, so let's show the work first, so in that first slot, we have 1 times 2 plus negative 3 times 10. I take 1 times 2, and then I add negative 3 times 10. So it's the sum of those two together. So that's 2 plus negative 30, which gives me negative 28. Okay. So now I'm done with that column. Now I move on to the next column. I do the same row. So I pick this exact same row, and now I'm multiplying it by this column here. So every time you're, you're taking a column, or I mean a row, and multiplying it by the column in the next matrix. That's all you do every single time. Column by matrix. Or, <laughs> I keep saying the wrong thing. Row by column, sorry. Okay. So this next digit over here is going to be found by taking 1 times negative 4. And you're going to add to that negative 3 times negative 11. So that's negative 4 plus negative 33 to give me negative 37. So now I'm done with this particular row. I move on to this row, row 2. And I repeat the process by multiplying row 2 by column 1. So you're just doing row by column every time. So now I take negative 2 times 2. And I add to that 5 times 10. So I have negative 4 plus 50, which gives me 46, positive 46. Then I do the same thing. I take this row, I multiply it by this column. My digits now are negative 2 times negative 4, and 5 times negative 11. And I add those two together, so that's positive 8 minus 55 to give me negative 47. Last row now. So let's do this row, negative 3, 7, and multiply it by this column here. So the um, the work here is going to be negative 3 times 2 plus 7 times 10. So that gives me negative 6 plus 70. So that's positive 64. And then I take, let's erase this column here. I take that last row and this column. So I have 
negative 3 times negative 4 plus 7 times negative 11. So that's positive 12 minus 77, which gives me negative 65. So this answer here is my resulting 3 by 2 matrix. Okay, now in problem 3, this is a 3 by 1 multiplied by a uh, 1 by 2. Now this, if you look inside, can be multiplied and your resulting matrix is going to be a 3 by 2. So that might seem a little weird to you that you actually can multiply these and it's going to end up being a much larger matrix. What you want to do here, again, you're doing rows multiplied by the column. So we have a 3 by 2. So we have 1, 2, 3 rows and 2 different columns here. Okay. For the first digit, or the first row, first column, so for this spot here, you're going to multiply this row, and there's only one thing in that row, with this first column here. So that first one is going to just be found by taking 3 times 1. You're not adding anything to this because there's only one row, one column here. Okay. Then you're going to take that 3 again and multiply it by the second column, which is the 9. So 3 times 9 is going to go in that second slot. So let me fill in that first slot. So that's 3, and this over here is going to be 27. Now I take the second row, which is just 8, and I multiply that by the first column. That's going to go here, so 8 times 1, and get 8. Then I take that, that same row, multiply it by the second column here, and I get 8 times 9 to give me 72. Finally, I have the third row. Multiply it by that first column, and you get negative 13 times 1, which gives me negative 13. And then now I'm going to take that same row, multiply it by this column, and I get negative 13 times 9. Okay, so this is now your 3 by 2 matrix, and I know that kind of saw, seemed a little weird, but it's just applying the same exact rules that we did before. You're going to multiply the row times the column. Okay, so row here multiplied by the column, that's why we got this first digit here. Then we took that same row, multiplied it by this column, that's how we got that 27. Then we, we uh, used up all of those you know, columns in that particular row, so then I used, and I go to the, the second row. I do 8 times 1, this is where I got the 8 here, then I do 8 times 9, which is why I got the 72 here, and so on. Okay? In the last problem here, we have a, whoa, sorry about that, we have a 4 by 1, multiplied by a 1 by 4. Okay, So we can multiply these together because the um, inside here is the exact same. Our resulting matrix is going to be a 4 by 4 matrix. So go ahead and make your slots here. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4 rows and 1, 2, 3, 4 columns. Okay, So please go ahead and try that one check with the key just to make sure that you have the process down. You're going to multiply this row by this column first. That's the number that's going to go here. Then you're going to take that same row, the 1, and multiply it by this column, the negative 8, and so on. So that's how you're going to fill up all of the rows here. Um, and then again, like I said, make sure you check with the key. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. Um, please make sure you're ready to come in, ask any questions that you have still, replay any parts that didn't quite make sense because um, it's very important that you can do these matrices without using a calculator. Okay, nice job. I'll see you in class tomorrow.